Hellbore las guns have become some of my favorite guns in Darktide. They used to be completely unplayable at launch, but after some buffs and adjustments, they're in a very good place, able to be used comfortably even on High Shock Damnation as a lone vet. They don't perform as well as something like a Bolter or an Auto Pistol, but are powerful enough to stand out as interesting and viable guns in spite of some drawbacks that could do with some tuning. Let's start with those drawbacks to get them out of the way. All Hellbores have a very long pullout time. This can be somewhat remedied by using Volley Fire to pull your gun out instantly. Note that this only works if you're currently not taking your gun out, so it's a good idea to remember that activating Volley Fire with your melee out is faster than trying to pull out your gun and then activating it. Keeping your gun out for as long as possible is generally what you want to do on Veteran, but it goes double for Hellbores. The second major drawback of the Hellbores is their abhorrent sights, or lack thereof. After cancelling the promised weapon customization, Fatshark didn't think to add any proper optics to the Hellbores, and so you're stuck aiming with an attachment rail that has a front post with no contrasting element. They have one of the worst sight pictures in the entire game, and take a while to get used to. It's a bit like trying to aim a refrigerator. Hellbores are a charge shot weapon. Higher charge levels deal more damage and use more ammo. There's a trick you can use to reset your shot. Going out of ADS cancels your charge, which lets you ready another one. This can be useful if you've misjudged how close you were to have line of sight on an enemy and lets you reposition without wasting a shot. You can cancel a charge shot by aiming down sights, letting go of right click and immediately letting go of left click, but the timing is really tight and very hard to get right. You can cancel a shot more reliably by using your bayonet and letting go of left click during its animation. You can also swap to melee and back to your gun, but the lengthy pullout time makes it a pretty bad option. Speaking of bayonets, I often see them dismissed as being useless due to the low damage they deal, as it's always better to switch to your melee weapon to hit stuff. But they have one big advantage over swapping to melee, which is pushing back leaping bursters with your gun out, letting you maintain volifier and save yourself from suffering the long pullout time. You can also push back bursters by shooting them, the Mark 1 and Mark 2 Hellbores need to be in Volley Fire and charge up at least a little. The Mark 3 does not need to be in Volley Fire, but still needs to charge up a bit as well. Just be careful not to blow yourself up. Despite the inclusion of a bayonet, the Hellbores suffer from damage reduction at close range, but it's a lot weirder than on infantry las guns. On uncharged shots, you will do the most damage past 25 meters and the least damage under 10 meters, except with the Mark II, which doesn't have distance scaling on flak. Fully charged shots only have distance scaling on Maniac Armor and the Void Shield of Captains. You can normally ignore this distance scaling, but it's good to know it exists, as it can explain some inconsistencies you may notice with your damage. One case where it matters is one-shotting trappers outside of volley fire with a fully charged Mark III body shot, which only works past a certain distance. All three marks gain target penetration on charged shots. It doesn't matter how little you charge it. Here are all the targets you can shoot through. Hellbores barely get affected by suppression, which is especially noticeable when compared to the MG-12. You won't need it most of the time you're getting shot at, since Volley Fire removes suppression entirely, but it comes in handy every once in a while. They also all penetrate carapace, which sets them apart from other las guns. Hellbores share a downside that isn't immediately obvious like their pullout time. Their mutant damage is extremely inconsistent due to their massive headshot and crit modifier. The latter in particular is going to be important later, as you have more control over your crit rate than your headshot rate on mutants. With all their common properties out of the way, I'll start going over each mark individually. Starting with the Mark II, it's the lightest variant of the three, has the fastest fire rate, charge rate, the lowest damage per shot, and the lowest ammo cost per shot. Don't let that fool you into thinking this gun is weak. It's comparable to an MG12 with a longer pullout time. The Mark II loses a couple of breakpoints, like one-tapping a trapper in the body in volley fire without a critical hit, but it makes up for it somewhat by having a very high fire rate. The other thing the MG-12 does a lot better than the Mark II is killing mutants, but outside of that, the Hellbore wins. 
It's more efficient at dispatching shooters due to excellent body shot breakpoints and target penetration, as well as ignoring distance scaling. The Mark II one-taps all shooters in the body even at point blank and will kill up to two per shot since it penetrates. It does so without volley fire or damage perks, except for dregs, which need volley fire. At close range and in volley fire, the MG-12 needs opening salvo and 25 flak to one-tap scab troopers in the body. No perk, and opening salvo to one-tap drags in the body, and it cannot one-tap scab stalkers in the body. The Mark II also one-taps scab shooters in the arm in volley fire with 20 flak. It is the only breakpoint against shooters that requires a perk. It beats out the MG-12 in auger and killing speeds, which is especially noticeable against bulwarks, thanks to the Hellbores losing distance scaling on charged shots. Being able to kill crushers at all is a nice bonus. Both guns are ridiculously ammo efficient. For blessings, Onslaught is a must pick. It dramatically increases your damage output by letting you pump out charged shots at a much faster rate. Stacks of Onslaught will not decay as long as you're holding a charge shot. It's currently bugged, I think, and you will drop your stacks if you start aiming down sights. No Respite is your second best blessing. I've already gone over it in my shotgun guide, but it's currently making you deal way more damage per stack than the description says. The Beast of Nurgle is also currently bugged, and No Respite makes you deal increasingly more damage to it with every shot. It also gives you a 2-tap breakpoint on dogs outside of volley fire. Other than that, it's mostly opportunistic damage against staggered enemies. The other blessings are either not very good or don't work well with the Mark II. Surgical could be good, as critting more reliably would help a lot against mutants, but you simply fire too fast for it to generate enough stacks to truly shine. You'll have one or two stacks at most if you fire fully charged shots with Onslaught 4 as fast as possible. Falter is bad. At the moment, it doesn't really do anything. Staggering on headshots wouldn't be a desirable thing anyway, since if it had a significant effect, it would just cause you to potentially miss your follow-up shot. It's especially weird to see this blessing on a weapon type with such high damage headshots. Sustained fire could be good, but currently the reset period between what the game considers a salvo is way too long for the bonus damage to be useful, as it requires you to slow down your rate of fire significantly to make any use of it, making you deal less damage than if you'd simply kept shooting normally. Infernus isn't worth taking, as the dot damage you deal even at max stacks isn't impressive. You wouldn't benefit from setting any important target on fire, since it's always more efficient to simply shoot it again to kill it as fast as possible, and your boss DPS is already good enough without it. Not that 9 stacks of burn deals a lot of damage. For perks, I recommend Flak and Maniac, as they improve breakpoints against most of the enemies you'll want to shoot. They also generally increase your damage against the two most common armor types. Maniac is also valuable, since mutants are the one special you'll need the most help against. Unarmored lets you one-shot drag gunners in the head outside of volley fire, and one-tap drag shooter and scab bruisers in the head outside of volley fire. I don't really value these breakpoints, as you'll be spending most of your time in volley fire. Unyielding is also not really worth going for, as you already delete Bulwarks and Reapers, and it isn't worth sacrificing Flak or Maniac for an increase in boss damage. The Mark I Hellbore is the medium variant. Less spammy, slower, and harder hitting than the Mark II, I recommend building it in a very similar way. Flak and Maniac are the go-to perks for the same reasons as before, with the added benefit of granting important breakpoints. 20 flak gives you a full charge one tap body shot on bombers and on shotgunners in volley fire. 10% against specialists should work on the bomber, but doesn't for some reason.
Unarmored lets you one-tap drag shooters in the head outside of volley fire, but once again, it really isn't worth sacrificing a perk for, as you'll be spending most of your time in volley fire, and a very slightly charged headshot will kill them even without the perk. If you have really high damage and stopping power, 25% against Maniac lets you one-shot trappers in the body and volley fire with a full charge. Once again, unyielding doesn't do much for you. I also recommend the same blessings as the Mark II for the Mark I, Onslaught and No Respite, for the same reasons. The Mark I has an easier time one-shotting a lot of important targets in volley fire, which is its main advantage over the Mark II. The otherwise perform very similarly against Unyielding and Carapace. Although the Mark II is more ammo efficient, they are both extremely generous with their reserves, so it isn't really that much of an advantage. Their biggest difference is when it comes to magazine size. The Mark III is the heaviest variant. It's the slowest to charge up and reload, and slows you down the most when firing, but it hits like a truck. It's capable of one-shotting every enemy in the game. I once again recommend taking Flak and Maniac for general damage purposes. More damage to mutants is always important, as well as generally helping against most specials. The same goes for Flak. It gives you one-shot body shots on gunners in volley fire, and with Sniper will let you one-tap scap troopers in the body in volley fire with an uncharged shot. Outside of those breakpoints, it's extra damage against most targets you'll be shooting. Other perks won't really do much for you. When it comes to blessings, the Mark III is a little spicier. Onslaught is still a must pick, even more so than for the other marks due to its slow charge rate, but I don't actually recommend no respite. Instead, Surgical is a better damage blessing for the Mark III. It's slow enough that you'll actually have time to build up to 3 stacks with a fully charged shot by only slightly delaying it, at maximum stacks of Onslaught 4, and the benefits from critting are pretty big. The only upside you'd get from No Respite is obliterating a Beast of Nurgle faster, but you already bully the poor slug enough. As the heaviest variant, it has the highest ammo cost per shot. In practice, its overall ammo economy really isn't bad at all, but its magazine size is by far its biggest drawback, alongside even slower pullout and reload animations. The usual meta feats work very well on Hellboards, but they aren't the only good picks for them. Confirmed Kill, Unwavering Focus, and Counterfire are, as always, a fantastic combo. Counterfire allows you to keep Volley Fire up easily for extended periods of time, letting you not only benefit from increased range damage, but also from the insane defensive benefits it provides you. Like removing suppression and making you immune to most interruptions. Unwavering Focus adds to those defensive bonuses by letting you essentially ignore all damage as long as your toughness is up. Confirmed Kill is by far the strongest toughness regen talent, getting stronger as you turn up the difficulty. 25% toughness gained instantly and another 25% over time is absolutely massive, especially when boosted by Unwavering Focus. As long as Volley Fire is up, you are practically immortal. Exhilarating Takedown is cute in theory, but in practice is lacking, and doesn't synergize with Hellboys very well. 20% toughness on headshot kills doesn't make sense when normal enemies die to body shots and elites provide more toughness with confirmed kill. The extra toughness damage resistance is complete overkill with unnerving focus up, and doesn't do much without it. At arm's length isn't bad, but loses value as enemy pressure increases, doing nothing for you in melee, or any time anything gets within 8 meters of you. Confirmed kill is range agnostic, and will juice your toughness even in melee. For the second row, you have options. Sniper can give you a couple breakpoints, and generally boost your damage. 
Demolition stockpile is always insanely strong. I personally don't run tactical reload, but it's worth considering, especially if you plan on using Deadshot. Here are reload speed comparisons with all feed combinations so that you decide which ones to run, if any at all. Demolition Team is, as always, a must pick. This is the only source of grenade regen Zealots and Ogrins have access to, and the higher the difficulty, the more value you get out of it. Bio-optic targeting has no real advantage, as the vast majority of specials come running at you from predictable spawn point while violently screaming and shaking. Should you need to point out an unpredictable enemy, like a sniper that's out of sight, simply call him out in voice chat and place an enemy marker in his direction. Covering fire just isn't very good, as you're better off removing priority targets than shooting into trash to pump someone's toughness when they would likely benefit more from a grenade. It's comically situational, only getting value if someone else is low on toughness, in melee, and there is nothing to shoot. And even then, how much value you're actually getting is questionable. For the fifth row, one after another is always a strong pick, as it makes chaining volley fire a lot easier. Deadshot is actually quite strong for Hellbores. Your accuracy while hip firing is very good in volley fire, even if a little inconsistent. And crits help your damage a lot, especially against mutants. If you're worried about needing to run duck and dive to support Deadshot, I have a little trick to show you. Getting shot while moving will cause you to gain stamina. In volley fire, with unwavering focus up and confirmed kill to juice up your toughness when you need it, you can effectively regenerate stamina on demand by simply walking around while shooting. Fragstorm doesn't really do anything for you with Hellbores, as you don't have Pinning Fire available to boost the bleed damage, and the other options are much stronger. I've already gone over Counterfire and why I recommend it. The other options really won't do much for you. Your reloads aren't long enough to benefit greatly from sustained fire, and with unwavering focus and confirmed kill, you'll rarely need a panic toughness button. The bigger they are is objectively not a good pick on Hellbores, as you already melt important augurants and have great monstrosity damage provided you can land weak spot hits. It is, however, a very fun pick letting you do very funny things like chaining volley fire with a beast of Nurgle and one-shotting crushers with a Mark III. All Hellbore marks play the same way. They have a lot more in common than differences and are the only truly balanced weapon category in Darktide. Each mark is distinctive enough that switching between them is fun and refreshing, without any of them sticking out as underpowered or the obvious correct choice. Knowing how much you need to charge each gun to get certain one-shots, especially on shooters, is an important skill to learn for marks 1 and 3 to get the most out of each magazine. Keep your gun out as much as possible, and when it isn't out, remember that activating volley fire skips the lengthy pullout animation. Get rid of your reflex to pull out your melee to push back jumping bursters and use your poking stick to knock them back instead. Keep chaining shooter body shot one taps, make use of target penetration and keep an eye on your magazine so you're not caught off guard without enough ammo to charge your next shot. And that's it for this guide. I'd like to once again thank MemeMacedon69 for helping with the script, as well as Commissar Tear and Tiny Angry Crab for their insights. I'd also like to thank Vas Janovic for making playing this game more bearable and helping me double check on my breakpoints. I plan on making more guides for Darktide, so feel free to subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. I also stream this game on Twitch at the highest difficulties. When, when I'm allowed. <laughs>